everybody, I'm Regiana and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to be talking with you guys today as we dive into another Bible study with me. We are currently in our Galatians series and we are about to read through Galatians 2. So I'm pretty pumped. I've been reading through this quite a couple of times and I think we've got some pretty good notes here. There's just like so much golden material here. Obviously the Bible is all great, but it's just, it's just real good. So I'm really excited about it. But if you are new to my channel, hello, and basically how we do our Bible studies around here is I will read through the passage and then I'll kind of give you like the lay of the land, what's going on, and then I will kind of talk about the verses that I feel spoke to me the most and kind of dive in from there. Now, of course, I'm just, I'm just a person, so... I try to edit out anything that's my words and I always pray before this that his words are spoken and not mine. So just putting that out there. I ain't trying to teach y'all nothing. I ain't trying to shove things down your throats. Just sharing here. So we're all sharing and I'd love to hear what you guys get out of these Bible studies or out of when you're reading the Bible, what you feel like the Lord puts on your heart. So go ahead and comment that down below. I love to discuss. I love to chat. So let's do it. But let's get to reading Galatians 2. Then after 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and also took Titus with me. And I went up by revelation and communicated to them that the gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to those who were of reputation, lest by any means I might run or had run in vain. Yet not even Titus who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised, and this occurred because of false brethren secretly brought in, who came in by stealth to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage to whom we did not yield submission even for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. But from those who seem to be something, whatever they were, it makes no difference to me. God shows personal favoritism to no man, for those who seem to be something added nothing to me. But on the contrary, when they saw that the gospel for the uncircumcised had been committed to me, as the gospel for the circumcised was, was to Peter, for he who worked effectively in Peter for the apostleship to the circumcised also worked effectively in me towards the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that had been given to me, they gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. They desired only that we should remember the poor, the very thing which I also was eager to do. Now when Peter had come to Antioch, I withstood him to his face, because he was to be blamed. For before certain men came from James, he would eat with the Gentiles. But when they came, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing those who were of the circumcision. And the rest of the Jews who played the hypocrite with him, so that even Barnabas was carried away with their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter before them all, If you, being a Jew, live in the manner of Gentiles and not as the Jews, why do you compel Gentiles to live as Jews? We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Christ Jesus, that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law no flesh shall be justified. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is Christ therefore a minister of sin? Certainly not. For if I build again those things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I through the law died to the law that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Y'all, that is so good. <laughs> Every time I read that, I'm just like, want to snap in the background because I'm like, yes, preach it. But, hey, okay, so I'm excited to dig into that. I don't know about you guys. And if you're not excited to dig into that, I'm going to tell you why you should be right now. So, <laughs> um, okay, so basically what's happening here is we're in Galatians, and Galatians is... Um, when you read at Galatians 1, it literally says, Paul, an apostle, not from men nor through man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead, and all the brethren who are with me to the churches of Galatia. So, it tells us right at the beginning that this is a letter to the churches of Galatia. And so, that's who Paul's speaking to here. Paul's the one who wrote it. It says that right at the beginning. So, if you missed part one, Galatians 1, the first Bible study with me in this series, I will go ahead and tag it up here so you can click it and watch it first and come back if you would like to. But that is what's going on here. And so I 
am just going to read out a couple of notable verses or like pieces of scripture that I think really stood out to me first and then I will pick a couple to really dive deep into because I think there's a lot to really pick apart in this chapter there's a lot here like you could spend some time like when I'm telling you I've been reading through this chapter multiple days this week like I really have and I, I still this would be a very long video if I tried to dig into all of it so I'm going to talk about some of those verses that really stood out to me and then we'll dive in so the first one that stood out to me is Galatians 2 6 that says but from those who seem to be something whatever they were it makes no difference to me God shows personal favoritism to no man for those who seem to be something added nothing to me um and then Another one is Galatians 2, 10. They desired only that we should remember the poor, the very thing which I also was eager to do. And then Galatians 13. And the rest of the Jews also played the hypocrite with him so that even Barnabas was carried away with their hypocrisy. Galatians 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Christ Jesus that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. And then Galatians 19 through 21, which is quite the chunk that I just read at the end there, but I'm, I'm going to read it again for you guys. And it says, for I knew the law, died to the law that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. And there's one more that I want to add in here because we're going to talk about this one too. And that is Galatians. We're going to Track, backtrack a little it's galatians 17 and it says but if while we seek to be justified by christ we ourselves are found sinners is christ therefore a minister of sin certainly not so well, we're gonna dive into those and hopefully by the end of this you will kind of understand why i am just like yes <laughs> to so many of those verses but we're gonna focus first is galatians 2 11 through probably through the end pretty much we're gonna reference some parts before that this is where we're gonna stay for a little bit so i'm gonna read some of it again and it says now when peter had come to antioch i withstood him to his face because he was to be blamed for before certain men came from james he would eat with the gentiles but when they came he withdrew and separated himself fearing those who were of the circumcision and the rest of the jews also played the hypocrite with him so that even barnabas was carried away with their hypocrisy and so um, there's some language there that if you're new to the faith or if you're new to reading the Bible, you're probably like, what does this mean? Because sometimes the Bible's confusing and there's some, there's some background knowledge we need first. So the Gentiles are people who weren't Jewish, if that helps clear that up for you. And then, um, Jesus had just come, died for our sins, and we are no longer in a bondage to the law. We are no longer tied to the law, and that is our only way for salvation. Now we are married to Jesus and freed from the law of Moses, and now our only way of justification is Jesus. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and that is it. You cannot earn it. You cannot work for it. He is the only way. Grace. That's it. We didn't earn it. And so, um, Part of the law of Moses, which is what the Jewish people followed back then, was that you could not eat with Gentiles or you couldn't even eat with sinners. And that was why it was such a mind-boggling, crazy ordeal um, to Jewish people when Jesus, who was a Jew, was eating with sinners because that was just like, no, you don't do that. And so what we have here is Peter was eating with the Gentiles until a group of people who it calls them, those who were of the circumcision, came and then he was like, oh, I gotta get away. Kind of trying to like save face, like I'm, I shouldn't be eating with them. And Paul saw this and he was like, oh no, 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 <laughs> this is not gonna pass. And so he was like, no, I'm going to say this right now because they were not being straightforward about the truth of the gospel, which is what he says here. And so he says, I said to Peter before them all, and then I'll get into what he said in a second. But conversely to the Gentiles, when we reference those who were of the circumcision here, um, we were talking about those who still strictly followed the law of Moses and believe you had to do that in order to be saved. Um, and mind you, there were people like Barnabas and Peter who did not believe that you had to do that in order to be saved, but were, that's why Paul is quick to call them hypocrites and that they fell and were carried away with that hypocrisy because they didn't believe that and now they're turning on what they say the belief. So now we're gonna go ahead and get into what Paul said to Peter when he was like, 
what are you doing this is not this is not it that's not how you, this is not what we're supposed to be doing and so he says um starting in galatians 2 14 it says but when i saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel i said to peter before them all if you being a jew live in the manner of gentiles and not as the jews why do you compel gentiles to live as jews we who are jews by nature and not sinners of the gentiles knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law but by faith in jesus christ even we have believed in christ jesus that we might be justified by faith in christ and not by the works of the law for by the works of the law no no flesh shall be justified this is amazing news to us because what good news is it to those who don't know this and who feel like they need to prove their way um, to justification or salvation or to Jesus um, that you don't like we can't we literally can't you can't we are free and we have been given this grace by Jesus he is the only way and so that is such good news and that's part of the reason why I love this passage so much because it is drilling in there especially if you have one of those like type a Enneagram 3 worker b personalities like me where you really want to earn things and prove yourself and work for it um sorry honey you can't <laughs> but that is good news it is it is amazing news that we can't and that we only need to have faith in jesus and so aside from all that i just couldn't ignore that real quick but in fact aside from all that what i see here is what i felt was like really called out to me is it's almost like he's saying why do you see them as less than and you as more when you cannot be justified by your own works just because you follow this law does not make you any better or does not mean that you cannot be seen with them you know what I mean or that they're any less than you like no 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 we are freed from that we are all the same now and so all of us Gentile and Jew are justified by our faith in Jesus and not by our flesh or works of the law and so we have this is where I kind of like to like apply it to the world this is how I can apply this to myself in my own life and I think we can all apply this is how we as Christians have to stop looking down on people period <laughs> but we have to stop looking down on people and groups of people who are living with or struggling with sin um, and that's what this that's the point that this really drives into me is that when you look down on other people that means you've placed yourself as higher and when you place yourself as higher or in a place where you can look down on others and separate yourself then you have tried to justify yourself by how good you've kept the law when we literally just finished saying that faith in Jesus is the only way we become hypocrites when we say that because now we are saying that we have earned this more than anyone else when it was given freely that is the beauty of grace and no one can boast in it because we did not earn it so when we look down on people or make people feel less than or think of them as less than sometimes we don't even have to say it sometimes it's in your brain that's why we have to check our hearts to make sure we're constantly reminding ourselves like i did not earn this i cannot earn this i am the king of sinners i am the worst of the worst and i am down with the worst of them um and jesus is the only way and the only reason reason that I am even my life is even remotely the way it is um, because when we do that and we look down on people then we have ignored the gospel and we have ignored the good news because what good is a savior when we can save ourselves you know and we can't and so when we start thinking that we can save ourselves and we start thinking that our works um, can do anything for us or make us any better then we have completely ignored Jesus and so that's where I want to read Galatians 2, 19 through 21. And this is where I'm like, oof, yes, go off. <laughs> um, and Galatians 19 says, For I through the law died to the law that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. I feel like this was a really big revelation to me when I was like early in my faith walk with Jesus. Um, is I, I definitely was a very like this is like the law I do this because I have to and um, this is the way it's supposed to be and this is how you do this and this is how you do that and I can't do this and I can't do that um, and whenever I messed 
up or fell short, it would be a deep despair because I knew the severity of the law, but I didn't totally understand the freedom that comes in Jesus' sacrifice. And by getting super down on myself, while some of that is godly sorrow, um, I was ignoring the grace of Jesus and how I don't need to be down and out because I couldn't earn it anyways. He already gave it to me. He already gives me the grace to move on and his mercies are new every morning. So when I mess this up, the good news to me is that his grace is new every morning and he is all I need and I couldn't earn it. And so that's kind of like the big takeaway that I wanted to go through today is one, how amazing is the freedom we have in Christ that we literally cannot earn it. And I don't know how many times he says it here, but um, he says it again and again and again that we cannot earn it. We cannot earn it. It is not through flesh. It is not through the law. We are freed. We have died to the law that we might live in God. And now I live for Christ. But yes, there's just so, so, so much good here. And I want to challenge you guys for a second. Um, and I might regret doing this. <laughs> um, but I feel like a big part of what Galatians 2 is about is how we have died to the law and now we are, we are free in Christ and how we cannot work to justify ourselves. Nothing we do can justify ourselves or make us higher than any other because Jesus is the only one. Jesus is the only one that justifies us and he's the only one that can make us whole and we cannot work um, to make ourselves any better and we cannot look down on others because we, we got this freely, you know? And this is something, I saw something yesterday on Instagram and I'm kind of afraid to talk about it. Um, and I might edit it out. I'm probably going to say it a couple times. Um, but I think that this leads into a good point um, with what I saw on Instagram the other day. And so we're not going to get into any sticky conversations here. But it is election season. And it's important to talk about. Um, and it's important for Christians to have conversations about this. But I saw something the other day. And it was a... Instagram post that like somebody that I know posted on their like reshared to their Instagram story and it said it's like saying Voldemort but like Trump and Christianity mind you where I'm not opening this up to like be a political conversation or anything about that about politics really it's more about like our hearts and how we're um how we are showing the gospel to the world um and how just like checking our hearts and checking how we want to share the gospel to people and mind you i'm not defending anyone in this so don't think that at all please the instagram post was called trump and christianity and the next couple of slides started off with is it very christian too and it was a couple of slides and it had um multiple situations of different offenses that trump has done things that he has said things that he has done people that he associates with that it's saying is it very christian to christian too and then questioning that Mind you, I'm not going to talk about the actions or anything that was actually discussed in the thing, but um, I just want to talk about that phrase because the phrase, is it very Christian too, really irked me. And then it ended with WWJD, vote wisely. And yes, what, vote wisely, please do. Um, and please consider what would Jesus do and consult Jesus, talk to him, um, pray before you... Um, while you investigate and you research and you do all this stuff because I do think voting is important but aside from that um I'm being like very careful with my words <laughs> um but it's just that phrase is it very Christian to just irked me so much because it only reinforces the false idea that Christians are perfect or at a higher standard or are never to mess up or do the right things um and i think that's so wrong and so when i see christians sharing things that say that i'm like you are ignoring the gospel pretty much you know what i mean because what does it mean to be a christian to be a christian what it means to be a christian is you believe that jesus died for our sins rose again and he is the way, the truth, and the life. And the only way to the Father is through him. You believe John 3.16, basically. And you, and you understand that as a human being, I am broken. I fall short. 
I make bad decisions, I am prone to sin, and I am in this fleshly body that wants to do everything but what's good for me and good for the others around me. And the only way that I can be even none are good but God. I cannot be good. I will never be good. And the only thing that makes me even remotely reflect such a thing as goodness is Jesus in me. Christ in me is the only way that I can function properly in this world. And any goodness in me that you're seeing, it is a reflection of Christ. It is not me. Um, and that's what it means to be a Christian. And so when I see something like that that says, is it very Christian too? And then all of these things about a person, by saying, is it very Christian too about another person, you are putting yourself higher. Um, you're placing yourself higher almost as if your actions make you better than that person or your inactions, you, the way you didn't do something or the way you did something makes you better than that other person so that you can look down and say, is it very Christian too? Um, and that, that bothered me. It really bothered me because I'm like, what are we telling other people? You know, like Paul who wrote this, he was a murderer. He literally murdered people. Are you going to say, is it very Christian to, to Paul? No, you know? And so I really encourage you guys to really check your hearts in every day, especially in the world. And, but especially during this election, because I think that election season really can stir up hatred in people's hearts towards people and because they seem so far away and they're like celebrities because they seem so far um it's very easy for hatred um to boil up in your hearts and hatefulness and it's just there cannot be darkness where there is light and if the light of jesus is in your heart there is no place for hatefulness there is no place for resentment and you just have to constantly check your heart before the lord when you're talking about people even people like our presidential candidates and everyone else running in this upcoming election because man it's important to check your heart and make sure that you know, you know what it is to be a Christian. You were broke. You're broken. I'm broken. We're all broken. You know, who's the only one that can save us all Jesus. And so when I saw that statement, those recurring statements of, is it very Christian too? That just tells me like when you're sharing that you're sharing with the world, you can work to be good. It makes it very action based, like what you've done. And I don't know about you, but even even in my life with Jesus, even after I've met Jesus, I go off the path constantly. It's a it's a constant little like this figurine, however you want to look at that. Um, and if somebody held up a long list of things that I've done, started with is it very Christian too, and then like put out all of the sins that I've ever committed or all of the ways that I've fallen short or all of the ways that I am not worthy of Christ. I would have a lot on that list, as I'm sure all of us would, but Jesus wipes that all away, and I think it's really important for us as Christians to remember, like, what are you showing people? You know what I mean? Like, what version of the gospel are you showing people? Like, again, I am not defending anyone. I am not um, justifying any of those actions that were mentioned in that post. I think it's important that regardless of whether or not you believe that somebody really believes in Jesus or whether or not you believe that somebody really is a Christian, um, that's between them and God. But you have to check your heart and make sure that you are not ignoring the gospel, that you are not letting Christ die in vain by looking at somebody's sin and putting yourself above them because of that, because you're ignoring the gospel when you do that. And that's what that statement is a very Christian too. Um, felt like to me. So with all of that, sorry to open up that can of worms, but like that was burning on my heart because that just, it, it really, I just, I take this so seriously and it like, it really hurts my heart when I, um, see people be careless with their words and it's, it's so easy to warp. And we talked about this in the last Bible study with me. It's so easy to accidentally warp the true message of the gospel. Um, 
and that's Paul here said he was he corrected it straight up he corrected it in front of the people and I think we have to check our hearts and correct ourselves constantly and check our hearts and make sure like how am I feeling about this how am I feeling about that is this in line with the gospel is this in line with what Jesus says is this in line with the word um especially right now like check your hearts y'all um and the only way to check your heart is to check it next to Jesus he is the only way um I was reading yeah in 2 Corinthians 10 12 it says but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. It says it. Paul said it there. Um, don't compare yourself and your relationship with Jesus or your heart next to somebody else's because when you compare yourself to somebody else, you are either going to find yourself as above or below. And we are called to compare ourselves to Jesus and the gospel and the word. And when you do that, you're always going to be below, but you will always come back to rejoice in knowing that he makes you whole and that, um, he has given you the grace that you need to be sufficient. He is sufficient and his strength is made perfect in your weakness. And when you are aware of your faults, when you're comparing yourself to Christ, you cannot look down on others because Christ is always the example. And if he, if Christ loves me and Christ is sufficient for me and Christ's strength is made perfect in my weakness. And if my sins are washed away because of Christ, and if I am worthy of the gospel because of who Christ is and what he's done for me, then I guarantee you that whoever is running for president is in the exact same boat and Christ is going to do the same for them too. So that is how I feel about that. <laughs> um, it's always very uncomfy to talk about that, but, um, I'm just going to remind you, I'll check your hearts and I'll say it over and over and over again. Um, and I really just encourage you to do that just to continue checking your heart before Jesus continue at the feet of Jesus coming to him and being like, all right, let's do a, let's do a diagnosis check here and see how everything is going and making sure that I am in line with the gospel and that I am not warping the gospel or creating a world where Christ died in vain. So, <laughs> um, thank you guys for watching. I know that was long winded and there was a lot there. That is just such a good passage. Like I read that and I'm still like, I, I need to read that over and over and over again. Cause what good news is that to me? But thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this Bible study with me um, and get excited for Galatians part three or Galatians chapter three. I mean, yeah, thank you guys so much. I love you guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye.